my partner and I recently bought this caravan to try and fit our five kids in, which is still a tight squeeze even for a caravan this big. Um, but then we started running into some power issues. I know we run it on a generator anyway, but these two AGMs that are fitted to it are 120 amp hour, they're just not cutting it. So we started looking for cheaper alternatives um, that could charge quick and you know, preferably be lighter. So the obvious choice is lithium. Um, but the problem is we can't find any lithiums that are reasonably priced. All right, so these batteries that we're going to try, I uh, haven't been able to find anything online about them um, ex other than a couple of other YouTube videos. Um, one of them was a guy named Eco Ambitions Australia and a dude named Ian Turner. Uh, they're the only people so far that I've found that actually have videos on them. Um, for their price point, you think that more people will be snapping them up, but it doesn't appear that that's the case. So anyway, we're going to try some of them and see what happens. All right, I've got my... Little cheapo lithium batteries here. I've got two strings, 48 volts a string. Um, I've got them attached to this multi plus inverter. It's a 3000 VA, so 2400 watts constant load, 5500 peak. Um, we've got a 150 over 45 MPPT, and we've also got this little baby one, um, and they're connected to a servo controller. So the question is are these little cheapo batteries? going to be okay with uh, you know with heavy loads and over long periods of time um, the idea of putting them in the 48 volt strings was to get some usable power out of them so 48 volts at 50 amps is you know reasonable that's what maxes the inverter out uh, and we've got two strings so we should be able to double that uh, reasonably without damaging them um, and it means that we can charge at 40 amps and we have a 45 amp charge controller so this seems like a pretty reasonably priced uh, set of batteries provided it does what it says it's going to do which well it might not so um, it's outside it's not in the caravan we've um, never on this board for the time being uh, there's a shunt there attached to one of the Victron battery meters um, we've got a isolator for the uh, AC loads uh, and the AC input um, so we're in inverter mode at the moment uh, this has got the ESS uh, the energy storage assistant loaded in it um, so it's actually more of a house configuration than a caravan con configuration and to be honest for the caravan you don't need the ESS uh, assistant so anybody who's not familiar with Victron um, you can get assistance for the inverters to help with using a AC coupled so you can in get a non-islanding PV inverter uh, and it can work with the loads with the MultiPlus so uh, basically the islanding inverter becomes, sorry, the non-islanding inverter becomes an islanding inverter. Uh, so pretty handy uh, feature. Uh, anyway, you don't really need that with the caravan. We just need the DC input um, when we're not running on a generator. And when we are running on a generator, we just want the charger to work at maximum performance. Um, you can limit that through the, this is the servo. So this is a little bit newer than the normal GX color screens. Um, you can limit the input current here for the DC side, for uh, the AC side, for everything basically. It's a pretty fancy little little device. Um, but long story short, I want to see if these batteries actually have the power on them they claim they have. Um, we're going to do that by cranking on the air conditioner in the caravan. It's one of the things that people told me that the inverter won't be able to do, but we've tested it already and it definitely does it. Um, so. I'm going to go and crank up the aircon and see what happens. Alright, this is the other toy that we have. It needs some fixing. Uh, it sprung a leak last time we were out and just kept stalling for no apparent reason. I've got a funny feeling that the impeller in the pump is is gone and she was getting a bit hot. But none of our gauges work, so something else we need to work on. Um, oh. Alright, uh, we use the van a fair bit. Oh shit, the kids are breaking the door. Um, so the kids play in here quite regularly. That van, is that on? There we go. Just wait for that to crank up. There she goes. All right, cool. We got aircon. Let me check and see what the uh, Victron gear is saying. All right. Well, the aircon's actually quite good on power. It's uh, 
to an 850 watts ish to an 820 uh, you can see 800 ish watts are coming from the battery as the PV inverter kicks in it's this PV sorry the MPVT is just plugged into some shitty old second hand uh, well actually I shouldn't say shitty old, they're working fine, but um, some old solar panels are just laying on my front lawn. Um, it looks a bit ad hoc, I'm sure the neighbours don't like it, but um, yeah, you can see here that we're getting 150 watts from the panels. Uh, we've got 838 coming from the inverter, so there's probably a few inefficiencies here. We've got 89 watts. This DC power is actually that little baby uh, MPPT because it's not plugged into one of the VE direct ports so this one is recognized as a MPPT because it's plugged into the servo controller the one down the bottom is not so we're, we're making 200 watts um, I've noticed that since I had the ESS assistant on here that it doesn't seem to subtract the power that's being contributed by the PVs to the battery which is unusual there definitely isn't a 99 watt load on the DC side at the moment. This should be saying it's producing 99 watts, not subtracting it. But whatever. Anyway, I'm going to let this run for a couple of hours. Um, I have actually done this test already once before. If I go and stick the fridge on, uh, it's an absorption fridge. If I take it off gas, put it onto AC, that'll load an extra 300 watts of load here. Um, but I don't think that's necessary for the moment. So I'm going to run this battery down to 50%, uh, see how much discharge we actually get from the batteries. Uh, this is connected to the VRM portal so it'll be logging all of that information. If you're not familiar with the VRM portal it's um, it's basically a data logging portal that uh, Victron provides for free and this little device can uh, oop, probably need to blow that out. Uh, no errors and it's, it's had contact so yeah so the VRM portal is, um, is logging all the information uh, from the servo device that it's collecting over its various buses um, and the statistics of the solar input, the power, the grid power taken, um, the power output uh, should all be should all be stored there. So I'll let this thing go until this battery's at 50% and we'll go from there.